The biggest lessons I've learned in my life are here. Through different topics, I'm going to inspire and motivate you to reach your success and your dreams. I'm so grateful that you're here on Journey to Success. So let's enjoy my next episode together. I am thrilled to welcome Michelle Steiner to my podcast today. Michelle is the owner and writer of uh, michellesmission.blog, a website that I highly recommend checking out. Her story is inspiring and I knew I had to have her as a guest on my show. So welcome, Michelle. How are you today? I am doing good. Thank you so much for having me. Right. So so beautiful energy already, yeah? <laughs> it's uh, it's nice to hear. It's nice to feel this energy. All right. So to come up with the title for my podcast episodes, uh, Michelle, I always conduct some research using my mm -hmm. tools. And this time I was uh, surprised to discover that around 2,100 people search for the question, what is learning disability? And uh, this happens every month, only in the, in the United States. So I cannot imagine in all the world, right? <laughs> right. And uh, so before conducting this research, I myself wasn't aware what learning disability was. So Michelle, would you be kind to explain to me and our listener what learning disability is? Sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, learning disabilities are pretty much just uh, a different a brain that's wired differently and has difficulty uh, with learning. A lot of times well, what we see a key factor in that is they'll have a discrepancy theory. For example, in my case, I'm really bad at math, but I'm re I have uh, I'm really good at English and I have other uh, abilities with that. But for some reason, I'm not able to be able to understand how numbers work and how math works. But I'm really good at uh, doing, uh, I have some other things that I can do. Okay, okay, super. I uh, read that uh, learning disability cannot be cured, but there are medication available to treat it. So what is your approach to treating learning disability? And uh, tell me if I, if I say something that doesn't match the reality, just correct me. Yeah? It's just what I read around. Sh sure. No, yeah, you are correct. Uh, learning disabilities are not something that can be cured or outgrown. Um, there are different ways that we, we do that, depending on what the uh, type of learning disability that is. Uh, what has worked for me is we, right after I was diagnosed, we started to do specialty instruction and accommodations. And when I mean specialty instruction, I had a learning support classroom where we worked on reading and writing and eye-hand coordination. And we attempted to do math. Uh, But I never really got far from that. It was pretty uh, clear at the beginning I wasn't going to be a mathematician. And when I started to get into regular ed classes, we started to do things such as uh, extended test time and having the test read aloud to me. And those things were really helpful and helped to improve my grades. And the main thing with learning disabilities isn't that the person can't learn. It's just trying to find new ways and To, to, and creative problem solving for whatever the issue is at hand. All right. So anyway, there is always a, um, a learning zone about it. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. even, if, even if you have a learning disability, right, uh, there is always space to learn also from, uh, from you and uh, from people who have uh, this uh, diagnos di diagnosis, right? Or, mm -hmm. or maybe the, it, it's a bit slow. How, how it works, basically? How... How can a person uh, improve um, uh, improve on his own uh, um, on his own uh, habits? Well, I think a lot of it is finding what works for you. I know for me, with going to college, math was always kind of the, the scary thing because I knew that it was going to give me problems. So what I did was. I found a program that had the least amount of math and science possible, and I also did all the accommodations that were listed uh, on campus. I had a note taker. I had extended test time. Those things helped, and I advocated for myself. And for me, 
uh, sometimes the, the best thing is to just try to work around uh, some difficulties that, that, that it might create. Okay, okay. I also read that uh, learning disability, let's say I studied uh, a lot before to <laughs> this fine. interview with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. So, yeah, definitely. I was actually very curious about it. Also because I didn't know what uh, what was learning disability. So mm -hmm. I was totally curious. And uh, I read that the learning disabilities could be genetic. So mm -hmm. was uh, that the case for you? I'm wondering because I think your family's reaction would have depended on this factor, right? Right. Um, as far as we know, I haven't had a family member that was diagnosed with a learning disability officially, but my mom and my dad have also often said, hey, I think I might have this because I know my dad struggled with math, but he found a way to, to learn that. And then my mom isn't the, the greatest with it. But as far as the official diagnosis uh, uh, with having the math disability, I'm, I'm the only one with that. And also, uh, I also have visual perception issues not, that are with my brain, not my eyes. So I'm not able to drive and I don't have anyone in my family that has that. And then the limited hand dexterity that I also have, that's definitely not a genetic uh, thing either. Okay. And uh, how did your family react to this uh, peculiar child? I mean, uh, mm -hmm. I, I think they accepted uh, this uh, situation, right? Or, they they or... definitely did. It, from the very start, they accepted the situation. Um, they did everything they could do uh, to help me. They went to all of my uh, individual education plan meetings throughout school, and they advocated for me. And we spent a, a lot of time... Uh, a lot of long, tearful homework sessions. I can remember being frustrated <laughs> a lot, especially in the beginning, but my parents worked with me and they also explained my disability to me at a very young age, which I think is really important. They explained that I had a learning disability and that I, my brain, I learned things differently. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally understand. And, um, and have you never met, uh, well, for sure, maybe uh, you met people they have the same uh, uh, the same diagnosis, right? I guess. Yes, I did. I think I have met people that have had uh, learning disabilities. However, a lot of the people that I met, especially growing up that had them, my peers, they had more reading-based disabilities. And sadly, uh, some of them had some really rough family backgrounds. And so they had some behavior issues that came along with it. But as an adult, that has given me the opportunity to meet other people that I struggle, that they struggle with math as well. So it's, it's really comforting to be around somebody that they also have some of those issues as well. It's interesting. I think, uh, uh, well, I think you help each other, right? Because there are mm -hmm. different types of uh, learning disabilities, as I, as I noticed. And uh, I don't know, maybe you were helpful to someone else and maybe another, another person was helpful for you, you know? Exactly. Because that's one of the things that's very helpful for me is whenever I get a chance to connect with somebody that has one, because then you don't feel like you're alone. And sometimes it's helpful when I get that chance through my blog or even helping students in school uh, that I work with at my job, that also... Uh, I can honestly say to them, I know what it's like to be there. I understand. Uh, I was there and it gets easier. And here are some things that you can do to um, help yourself. Yeah. I think for this, maybe we we live in a, in a good uh, in a good era. I mean, we mm -hmm. always talk about how much bad can be Google, Reddit, on Facebook. Uh, Facebook, whatever. Right. But the truth is that if you actually find the right community for you, uh, it, it's 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 not bad. I mean, it's totally good. You know, it, it depends how you can use this uh, tool to to meet your community, and uh, and then you notice you are not alone. Exactly, because as an adult with, with the rise of social media, I have found other people that do have dyscalculia, the math learning disability that I have, and have some other issues. And sometimes we'll be talking about some, uh, something and they'll be like, well, thank you for giving me that validation, because that's something I struggle with. And mm -hmm. that, that just really builds a community 
Uh, and that's comforting to, to know that there are other people that, that are that have the same uh, problems. But I think this is something that came up later anyway. I, mm-hmm. I mean, I read an article on your blog uh, mm-hmm. where you mentioned that you had been a bully in the past. Yes. So I've also experienced bullying, mm-hmm. uh, both during uh, middle school and in high school as well. And uh, at that time, I thought that going to high school would be different and uh, uh, that it wouldn't happen again. Mm -hmm. However, it did happen again. And I remember feeling like giving up, you know, and feeling sad. Like I was wondering why it was happening to me and uh, what I did to make people treat me that way. I I think you know what I what I mean uh, Right. Definitely. I I can remember it was really hard because the bullying started early when I was in school. Uh, First of all, I was an only child for many years. And so I had most of my interactions with adults when I went into school. Uh, My brother didn't come along until I was 13. So it was already hard to relate to kids. Uh, And also it was really hard uh, when you had the disability in the classroom because I quickly got labeled the dumb the dumb one. And people saw that I went to learning support. I went to a very small school district and you just couldn't really hide. So that, that also made me stand out in a negative way. Uh, when I was older, it got a lot harder in school. Uh, academically, things were gotten a lot easier, but uh, socially it got really hard because the groups became a lot more defined. And I just didn't feel like I fit in with a lot of my peers. And one of the things that really helped me was there was a school in a neighboring district and they had a uh, program that, well, it was for anybody that was in a school, the, the school district. And they had an arts program and I met some other students that uh, were involved with uh, running a newsletter and other uh, forms of art and expression. And these people uh, didn't really, they didn't know me. I was able to shed that reputation that I had as an outcast for all those years. And um, I don't see a lot of the, um, them now, but that gave me the courage to reach out to other groups uh, in the community. And I've been able to maintain uh, friendships with them past 20 years. So I think that was helpful, finding my tribe. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. So anyway, uh, reading these, um, this blog, uh, of yours, there was this uh, this post that you you made it. I'm making this question because I, I'm mm-hmm. actually curious about about sure. something. Um, where you were playing with other children, uh, I don't remember now if it was a basket on volleyball. And now I, I I don't properly remember, <laughs> but they used to uh, they used to confuse you with uh, uh, with the hands, right? They used to like to uh, to make fun of you and. Right. Uh, I was very sad when I when I read that that um, that article mm-hmm. on your blog, but something that I didn't catch it because I don't know if I read uh, everything. I have to be honest. But mm-hmm. how did you overcome that kind of feeling, that kind of uh, uh, stress? Uh, in uh, you know, uh, how did you overcome basically to success, to you know, to something? Uh, beautiful to them to the uh, michelle steiner that you are you are right now basically well first of all i've had a lot of people that have invested in me and could see a lot of my strengths that that i could do and i've had good people that i i had to intervene in my life it happened a little bit later than maybe some other people with finding friends but i had some awesome people that have been invested in that and could see that because for a long time i couldn't see a lot of the things that i could do or the the good that i could do and I think it also is more empowering for me to focus on what I can do rather than I can't do. Uh, I can't play volleyball very well because I do have my eyes will blink if a ball comes in contact or somebody's hands uh, come towards my face. I, I, I blink and that can be hard yeah. for me. And so what I do instead is I like going to our local gym and I like to uh, take non-competitive group uh, fitness classes and I also like to work out independently in their uh, wellness center on the on the treadmill or the elliptical or lift weights. So that's something I can do. And I also like to just focus in on things, other things too, that I'm good at. I may not be great at math, 
but I love to read. Uh, reading has always been a passion of mine. My dad read to me from the time I was really little, and uh, writing has also been a, another passion of mine. I can still remember that was one of the first things I could do. I think I wrote a story about a dinosaur, and my parents said, hey, this is pretty good. And that just encouraged me to uh, go out and write and read. And uh, I feel frustrated when I focus on the things that are really hard for me. But when I do the things that I can do and, and I enjoy doing, it's uh, more empowering for me. And I don't feel as frustrated. Beautiful. Not very, very beautiful. People need to hear this, truly. Mm -hmm. um, especially people who have... Um, you know who have g genetic problem you know mm -hmm. and they they give up too much uh, too much easily and then i hear people uh, like like you that you are truly superwoman and i love it um what else uh, uh, oh actually just a question i just um, just a bit curious actually talking about mm -hmm. the blinking eyes right mm -hmm. is it related to I don't know, honestly, the term in English, because my, I, as you can hear, I am a mother Italian tongue. Mm -hmm. uh, but is it related to epilepsy, like the blinking eye, or is something totally different? What, what it's related to is the eye-hand coordination and the visual perception. It's just one of those things. I just, my eyes will do that. Oh, it's not really a, a, an issue like visual, like glasses okay. won't stop that or something uh, similar to that. It's just, that's really related a lot to just the eye hand coordination. So I see these hands coming towards me and I, my, I, I'm just not able to really process the information or, or and it affects like how I, how I will react as well. You did a lot of study about yourself. This is very good because only in this way you can have a control, you know, about right. uh, yourself, about your body uh, only in this way you can be sure about what you can do and what you can't do. And I'm talking um, generally, yeah? I mean, all of us uh, mm -hmm. has to know what uh, we are able to do and not. And uh, to do this, you, you have to study a lot. You have to, to know very well yourself. Uh, you, actually, you actually know yourself pretty, pretty well. And uh, it's very, very beautiful. So... I have a story for you uh, okay. about me, actually. So some time ago, my family told me something that the doctor had mentioned to them when I was a child. Mm -hmm. So they said, hey, Fabio, we can finally tell you that the doctor said you might be different from other children. So mm -hmm. you might get easily distracted, unfocused. But at the same time, he also say that if you become passionate about something, no one would be better than you. And then they say to me this, um, I think a couple of years ago, but it's something that happened when I, I, I was, uh, I think, maybe three or four years old, I guess. Um, and I remember my mother at that time uh, was crying a couple of years ago as, mm -hmm. as if she had to release something very heavy from her shoulder. However, I didn't care or ask any question because I had already accepted myself mm -hmm. and uh, loved who I was. And uh, I've been working hard to become the person I want to be. And I believe this is the key to success, you know, especially when you feel different from what society expects. So you have two choices in life, in my mm, uh, in my opinion, so to be the hero of your story or the victim. So uh, I've chosen to be the hero and you are clearly super warm, Michelle, as I said before, truly. So I really admire you. Oh, thank uh, you. But <laughs> you're welcome, but it's actually true. And based on all of this story, right, I have two questions here for you. So when was your haha -ha moment? Like... Uh, Aha, uh -huh, now I understand why, uh, I don't know, I don't read the clock on the wall, for example. Mm -hmm. And uh, another question is, uh, when did you decide to take action, to be the hero of, of your story? I think the aha moment was whenever I was in college in my late 20s. Um, ah, late a, then. All yeah, right. it took a long time because I was so frustrated. And I thought, well, if I could just cure this disability, everything's going to be okay. And it was finally, I had to move back in with my parents financially because I 
I was at a job and uh, that was hard because I don't drive and my parents live out in the country. And I, but I thought this is the time that, that it's time to try to go back to university and, and just give it a try. That's all I said. I just have to give it a try. And I, fa- I really researched and I found a great program that was the service end of special education. And I found disability accommodations and I found the least amount amount of math and science possible. And when I was there, I got to understand about my learning disability and who I was. And I got to understand other people's perspective. And when I started to advocate for myself, I found out that I could do this. I could get good grades. I made dean's list one semester. And I was able to graduate with a bachelor's degree, despite being told I couldn't do it. And then I thought, oh, I can do this. And that's when I started to wake up and realize that that I could. And then I had a friend that told me years ago, you should really write about having a learning disability. And I thought, well, I don't know. It's kind of personal. I don't know if that's the best course of action. I think I wrote some pretty bad poetry for a while, (laughs) one of my writing groups. But when I finally wrote that, that was another aha moment because when I got it published, I found that that was the most healing thing I have ever done. Okay, okay. So basically your haha moment wasn't so much far from your um, uh, taking action time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sorry. I don't <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, you actually answered. Uh, you answered perfectly, but I, I wasn't sure. So it's actually, it was actually very short. Okay, like uh, as, as, yeah. as, as soon as you understood the, 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 the diagnosis that you had, it look, looks like uh, how can I say, you didn't grieve so much. You just decide to take straight away action, right? Or not? Yes, definitely. I decided that it was just time to uh, take action and do what I could do. And uh, finally, I started just, uh, you know, just stopping that what I couldn't do and just accepting it and saying, okay, this was just something that I couldn't do, but this is the action I can take, and I, this is what I can do, and I move forward with that. Before we go through, if you're enjoying this podcast, please consider taking just three seconds to share it with someone else. It is a small gesture that could make a big difference in someone's day. Now, sit back and enjoy the rest of the episode. It's it's truly wonderful. It's truly wonderful. Um, I have another question here for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. On your website, I I can see that you have a, a connection with uh, butterflies, flowers, mm-hmm. the color pink. So is this connection related to your diagnosis or is it just a personal preference? Well, it, it's both. It's also a personal preference. I've always loved butterflies right. and flowers. But one of the things that I get to do is if I'm not able to drive because of the disability. So I'm blessed to have uh, people that can take me where I need to go. Uh, my my family's great for that. I have some great co-workers and my husband is wonderful. He'll uh, take me to work in the morning and other places. And sometimes we'll be in the car and I'll say, did you see that? I'll notice something because I'm not able uh, with my, with my disability, I can sometimes pick up on uh, things that other people miss. And he'll say, no, I'm focused on the road as he should be. (laughs) And I'll notice these things. And then I get a chance to go back and I can take a picture of a, if I'm on a walk to get somewhere, or uh, I I can look at the fly. I'll um, take a picture of the flower that I, that I might've saw from the, the passenger side and people will say you can bring out details in a flower that uh, I don't see until you until you bring it out. So I think that's part of the disability uh, that I that I'm able to notice things and pick up on them and bring out uh, a lot of details in my photography. Why that? Why why uh, you can notice something that other uh, don't? A lot of times people that have, that are neurodiverse and have brains that are wired differently can pick up on things that maybe other people just uh, might miss. I can remember 
people would say, oh, people with learning disabilities are really visual. And I would be frustrated mm. with that when I was younger because with my limited hand dexterity, I really can't draw a straight line. And I, it was hard to stay in the lines when I would color and things like that. So I thought, well, I'm not really that great at art, but I just didn't find the right medium. Uh, there's other people, uh, of course, everybody experiences it differently, but some people can hear sounds that other people might miss. Other people can uh, just have that sense of smell or there, there's just some, sometimes other senses. And that, that can just mean that uh, sometimes uh, just if another sense isn't working as well or just if something else doesn't work well in the body, the other part just uh, starts to um, compensate for that. And uh, so this is clearly a positive thing about it. Mm -hmm. So at, at the end, tell me, what are the positive things? and the negative things about this, um, uh, this diagnosis, basically. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, there's definitely a lot of positives in that, too. Yep. But what are them? Like, uh, if you have to, um, if you have, like, to put it on the plate, right? Right, right now. <laughs> and what are the positive and the negative things, in your opinion? I think a lot of the positives are empathy, because I can understand what it is like for somebody that has a disability to uh, be able to, to understand that because I've, I've gone through a lot of the similar things. And that kind of also gives me a passion to be able to help somebody else, like with a lot of the students that I work with. I want to see them be able to be successful um, in their own right and have their own experiences. But without that, I don't think that would have uh, made me into the empathetic person that I yeah. am today. Uh, some of the negatives that can come, it can be difficult if I encounter a math problem or I'm not able to read the Facebook clock. Sometimes that can be uh, hard. Uh, that It can be difficult if I need to go somewhere and I don't have transportation or a ride will cancel on me and I understand things happen and we just kind of go with it and work around that. That can be hard. Uh, it's influenced my choices. I couldn't live uh, out in the country. I'm really lucky to live in a central location where I am able to take myself places independently. So that makes it nice. And sometimes just with the processing, uh, it can be hard with understanding maybe what directions that somebody gives that can also be a difficulty sometimes even out in the community it can be hard uh, with the visual perception i can't use an escalator because it's hard for me i can see the stairs moving but i don't know when to jump on or off so uh, we'll either use the elevator or we'll use the, a regular staircase which that's fine for me uh, it can also be hard if i'm out in at a store and we're trying to i'm trying trying to total up objects, uh, items, that can be difficult. I don't know when I'm, how much I'm spending, but if I use cash, that really makes it easier because I can see the, uh, the currents, the dollars and uh, the other forms, you know, disappearing. And I can kind of get a sense of what I'm using. If, if I have the debit or a credit card, it's more of an abstract concept to me. That's that's interesting. It's truly, truly interesting. And um, actually, uh, talking about clock and uh, numbers, mm -hmm. my apologize, Michelle, about... Uh, <laughs> 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 I do. I, I mess up with Google Calendar. I didn't want, sorry. No, no, that's <laughs> I was, all right. I was thinking, USA, oh my God, what did they do? No, yeah, well, no, I was no. Just i was just worried i missed a meeting sometimes that sometimes no that you didn't miss there. a meeting <laughs> <laughs> you didn't miss the meeting it's just what you say to me about the time and say no way what did they do ah sorry truly i apologize I, I i hope i that didn't put you like in the corner or something because i didn't want of course Oh, so, no, yeah. no worries <laughs> <laughs> and uh right so just the last question for you and uh, how many times you failed before to reach success? So before to reach uh, the Michelle uh, Steiner that you, you are right now? I have uh, failed uh, more times than I can count on a lot of things. Uh, sometimes I can remember there would be times I would study for a test or work hard in a class and I would still would maybe fail the test or wouldn't do well in the class. And I just had to get back up and I had to try again. There would be some, 
uh, some things that I would try and they wouldn't work out. And I just had to find a different way to approach it. And um, I, I guess the, the meaning is that there is definitely success that, that can come. And it's just to keep, for me, it's just to keep on finding new ways to do things. That's right. And, uh, and this, Michelle, so we did it. Do you have any, anything to say before to, to close? Tell me. <laughs> I would just like to encourage uh, people that have learning disabilities to uh, just to keep on trying to, to know what they want and to just keep on uh, working at getting what you want. Uh, success may not come in the package that you think it will yeah. be at, but uh, it might turn into something even better. That's right. Michelle, it was a delight to have you here as a guest on the Fabi podcast. And uh, thank you for taking the time to join us and sharing your insights with our audience, of course. I really hope you had a great experience. And uh, yeah, I look forward to the opportunity of having you back again. Why not? Right? Yes, I would <laughs> love that. Thank you so much for having me on. I certainly appreciate it. Of course. Thank you. Bye, Michelle. Thank Bye. you so much. Here we are. Congratulations. You just finished my entire episode. So the only thing I ask is to take a moment to give Journey to Success a rating. By the way, thank you so much for being here on Journey to Success. I'm very grateful. Thank you and see you next time.